So what I'd like to show you in this video is the Thermite Free RFC. Now, you can find this for yourself if you go onto the NIST website. Now, if Stephen Jones and his uh, associates are confident that thermite was used to destroy the World Trade Center, then they should be willing to submit that in a legal document. And you can find this legal document that they should have submitted this in on this page, which is the um, NIST page, the Office of the Chief Information Officer for NIST. And you can scroll down, and then we can scroll down, and you can see here, and we'll, let's correct some myths about the dates that have been put about. Um, we've got a request for correction by Edward Haas. This was about Building 7. That was filed on March the 1st, 2007. Morgan Reynolds filed a request for correction on March the 8th, 2007. Dr. Judy Wood, uh, March the 16th, 2007. And then as you see here, request for correction from Bob McIlvain et al., which is April the 12th, 2007. And this is the one that we're interested in um, because this is the one which uh, Stephen E. Jones and James Gourley put together with a few others. And we're going to download this now. So I'm going to save link as. In fact, I'll save it on the desktop. Um, save it there, and it's now downloading. And here it is. Uh, and this, I believe, is a text document, so we can select the text here. And so this is the petition. This petition is a request for correction of information sent by, and you can see here Stephen Jones, um, Richard Gage, Kevin Ryan. So this is all in this document. I'm now going to search this document for the word, say, Jones. And there you see, we see on this panel here, we see all the occurrences in this document of Jones. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of those. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a new search, and I'm going to search for thermite. Oh, look. Total instances found. None. So Steve Jones hasn't included any references to thermite in the request for correction. Mm. So now let me search for molten metal. So I'll search for molten. Mm. And you can see it's in the current PDF document. Well, let's just see. Let's search for metal. No instances of metal either. How strange. So there's no references to molten metal in this. So we're now going to go back... Uh, and look at the other document, which was the response by Stephen E. Jones et al. And we're going to save that link. And up it comes. Oh, now, this document, we can't actually search this because it's not set into a text searchable format here. This is like a photocopied format. And we don't appear to have the um, the actual text, which which is accessible. So what I'm going to try and do is now convert this to another format. And so what I've got here is a version which I've converted so that we can actually extract the text. So in, in the PDF reader, I can now read the text here. Uh, if I go to this other version that I've got here, the original version which I downloaded, you can't actually select the text. So all I can do is select it as a graphic because it's actually been saved as a graphical file rather than a sort of text file. So I'm now going to go back to this text version. I used a OCR to convert it to text. And we'll use the search facility again. And we're going to search for Jones. And again, it gives the various entries about Stephen E. Jones. Uh, and then we're going to search for molten, for molten metal. No instances found of molten metal. And now we're going to search for thermites, and we will find some references. Here we go. 
So we've got three references to thermite found in this document, so let's have a look what they are, and they're actually all in this paragraph here. There's the first one, which I'll now try and zoom into. Consider the Materials Engineering Inc. has this to say about its thermite residue tests. So that's the first. I'm going to hide that now so we can get, we've got a bit more space so that we can see this. So I'll now highlight this. Consider that Materials Engineering Inc. has this to say about its thermite residue tests. When thermite reaction compounds are used to ignite a fire, they produce a characteristic burn pattern and leave behind evidence. These compounds are rather unique in their chemical composition, containing common elements such as copper, iron, calcium, silicon, and aluminium, but also contain more unusual elements such as vanadium, titanium, tin, fluorine, Mangan and manganese. While some of these elements are consumed in the fire, many are also left behind in the residue. MEI has conducted energy dispersive spectroscopy on a minute traces of residue identifying the presence of chemical evidence. The results coupled with the visual evidence at the scene provide absolute certainty that thermite reaction compounds were present, indicating the fire was deliberately set, not of natural causes. So we've got this reference to thermite but if I click on that link that's supplied in the document, this actually refers to something um, from 1996. And it's a fire investigation which has nothing to do with the World Trade Center. So why is this RFC referring to something with regard to thermite which has nothing to do with Stephen E. Jones's research? It doesn't make any sense. So it looks like uh, the people that are presenting this thermite hypothesis are not really that convinced by it, because if they were, they would have submitted it in a legal document. Now what we can do here is we can download Dr. Judy Wood's RFC, and we can see what's in there. Okay, so that's now downloaded, and I'm going to open that. Now I think, again... Oh, yes, we can select the text here. So this is the one we just downloaded. Um, so this is this is what Dr. Wood submitted. And you can scroll through this. And I'm now going to search for Directed Energy Weapon, or GEW. So let's just put new search, GEW. And you'll see we've got a number of references to GEW. So this is actually in the document. And then if we put energy, unusual energy effects, unusual directed energy weapons. So the point here is that Dr. Wood has put all this information into her document in terms of the research that she's compiled. And this also went into her legal case, which you can download separately. So we can clearly see that Dr. Wood's research is strong enough to go into a legal challenge whereas for some reason Stephen E. Jones' research is not, perhaps because his story about thermite is simply not true. The point being, and I'm now going to switch to a better quality version of this document because this is what NIST is on this website. You can see it's slightly blurry. I'll hide that so you can, you can see these pictures are all slightly blurry. But if you look at the one that she actually submitted, you'll see this is a lot clearer. I've got this here. This is the one that she actually submitted. So this is the one that's on this website, and I'm now going to flick to the one which she actually submitted. And you can see this is a lot clearer. It's like they've printed out and rescanned the original RFC. There's the one on this website, and there's the one that was submitted. So it's gone all a bit blurry and not very good. But that's just another little piece of information for you. I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and... Um, Please remember that thermite doesn't cut it.